Yeah, well, welcome back to a farm west of Boring. Today is another warm day. It's going to be in the low 90s, and it's a beautiful, cloudless day. No clouds in the sky. So today we're going to be continuing on with framing of the um, chicken coop, chicken shed. And the last video I finished up framing up this door, I still have a couple of... Uh, base plates to put on there so I'm going to cut those now put those on and then we'll go ahead and start uh, framing in this uh, between these posts <clears throat> another little trick that I use a lot of people already know about this it's no big secret but I see sometimes people just out measuring willy-nilly on common measurements so in this particular case that first cross piece over there is 26 inches off the deck and that second one is 52 inches off the deck so rather than getting out the tape measure and measuring 26 and 52 every single time on every post make a storyboard which shows 26 and 52 and here's how that will work Put the storyboard up against here and then put the square on 26 which is right there so now we've got exact same measurement every single place on on these as long as I use this storyboard So there we go, 52 and 26. Now I'll do the same thing over on this one. And I've already done that one and we've already done that one. So there's our framing for this side. Now we're getting that side here framed. Okay, so we've got a clean out door framed in down here. So that's 10 inches high and 5 feet wide. We'll be able to have a door there that we can open up and shovel the stuff out through there. A couple of ventilation windows. And the rest of our cross beams. Rails, cross rails, 2x4 rails. We're discussing how big of a chicken hole. We're going to have a chicken hole right over there where they can go in and out and I'm trying to determine how big of a hole that they need. I'm not quite sure. Welcome back to a farm west of Boring, where life is anything but boring. Today we are going to have a little bit of a diversion from the chicken shed build. We are going to go out and pick up six more totes for storing water in or and or putting firewood in. We really need more totes for the firewood. So that's, uh, I got a call from the tote guy yesterday and he said he's going to pick up some this morning. They're going to be on his trailer. He's out in Tigard, Oregon, so that's on the other side of town. So we got to get early start, get over there beat the traffic traffic's always bad getting to that side of town in the afternoon so let's get over there get those totes and uh, get loaded up and get them back over here to the farm so there we go we six more totes take those ladders out of there and we'll fill those things up with uh, firewood well we're back from getting the totes this morning and it's getting warm again it's going to be about 86 today so I'm down here going to get a couple hours of work in on this uh, chicken shed. Yesterday we pretty much got the clean out door framed in, the nesting box door framed in, the nesting boxes will go out through that opening, uh, a couple windows 
I think we're just going to put hardware cloth up over those and then a piece of plywood to cover it up for winter time. Summer time will just be left open. So we've cross ventilation here. I guess I'm just going to frame up a stick wall going up to the tops of these posts here. So what I've done is I've taken these uh, Home Depot 2x6s and put them across to give me a base to work on framing that wall rather than doing it on the floor and then ha having to lift it up there. So we'll see how that works. So I'm getting my first 2x4 made. I think I'll just uh, toenail them into that beam and then have two top plates going across and stagger the joints on the top plates. Okay, so I've got my top plate on there and that looks like it's a little bit off. So I've got them marked two foot on centers. I decided to just go two foot on centers. You know that one, this one, top one's gonna go that way just a little bit. So I've got the layout marked on there. There I made a mistake, I started doing 16 inch on centers. Uh, oh well, two foot on centers. They'll be right underneath the um, rafters. First rafter will be right on the very end of that beam. So now I have to get up there and measure the height of this beam and that the beam down there. And then I will just see if which one needs to be cut off and how high I need to make my um, studs. I am cutting some 27 inch studs. I guess I should get up there and check and make sure that that's right. Okay, so if this is the top plate, I'm just using it at the bottom for now. Okay, so that's the top plate. Here's the stud. And again, that uh, two by four at the bottom will go at the top, but then that is even with that. So the when that two by four is on the top, the two by four will be even with the top of the four by four post. So 27 it is. So I wanted to brag a little bit on these two by fours. They came out. I milled those out of that log, that uh, 10 foot log that we got from our Tualatin urban logging program. Got one more over there. Here's another one that we got. This one is from uh, Southeast Portland. And then we've got a whole bunch of them from the trees that we cut down here. But, you know, just look at this beautiful. Just look at this beautiful two by four. Cutting them 27 inches long. Anytime you're working on stuff like this, you're cutting, you want a good, decent workstation. Now I'm using a ladder for one end there, and I'm using this uh, old sawhorse for this end. And I probably should put this one. This is this is even more beat up sawhorse. They've been through the war, but you want to have a good, decent work area, workstation. You don't want to be doing this on the ground, someplace where it's nothing stable and the board is moving. The other thing too is these saws here, these um, worm drive saws, they have this little hook on them. And you probably know all about this, but that's made so that it can hook over a two by four. And like, like that one over there, it could hook over that two by four there. Where sawhorses are usually made with these little hooks like that, so you can just hook it there. That way you're not sitting it down on the ground, bending over, picking it up every time you're using it. I'm sure there's a lot more tricks that I don't know about, but these are just two, several things that I, that I know. I always try to t tell guys I'm working with, bring the work to you, don't go to the work. So in other words, like right now, we've got a pile of two by fours over there. But rather than walking over there, getting a two by four and bringing it back, <clears throat> load 10 two by fours onto the tractor and bring the tractor over here. Don't be walking over there and picking up one two by four and bringing it back. Think of, think of all that extra work you do in one day. Bring the work to, your, to you, don't go to the work. So now this is gonna be cut into 20, a 27 inch piece here. So let me show you how I do it. I'll, I'll use this square and I'll put it about 27 inches. Now I take my tape, and my tape out. You know, just slide this square until I hit 27. That way, I don't have to pull out my pencil, make a mark, pull the tape in, go get the square, mark the square, 
just makes things a little bit easier. Everything you can do to cut down on a number of steps is something that saves you time. So I'm going to pull this in. Now I'm going to get my pencil out of my carpenter's bag. Where is it? There we go. Make that mark. And now one thing you can do is you could move over, I think that saw is an inch and a half, move over and use it as a guide for the saw. Or you can just follow the line if you can cut a straight line. Using the square as a guide is, is not a bad idea. The only thing is you don't want to be, you want to be using it to where you are grabbing it like this and you're making sure your fingers aren't underneath here. Make sure your fingers are quite a ways away from there. And also as you're cutting, you want to be holding the 2x4 back this way. So as the blade's going through here, you want to be pushing back a little bit so that it doesn't, so that the cut opens up rather than closes. If it closes, then it binds on the saw blade and then, the, then things start to go haywire. So you want to be holding with your hand over here, pulling back slightly and holding up slightly because once you cut, it's resting there and it's resting there. So once you cut the, the cut's gonna go down. So you wanna hold it up just slightly and pull it towards you just slightly to keep the saw blade from binding in that cut. Let's see if I can do it here. Okay, I'll try it with this method here. Now there's a little diamond right there, little cut. And that's where the saw blade should go. So what you wanna do is you wanna line up that little notch on the line here and then be, before you turn the saw on you want to get that blade the blade in line with the the, uh, the line down here so that way you know you're pretty straight you don't want to be going like this and starting the saw you want this to be in you want the saw to be straight in line with that cut line so now that I'm there I can slide this over and then get this saw it so it's square. Now I'm going to hold this really tight, make sure my fingers aren't underneath here. Okay, so there we go. We've got 27 inch cut. Let's check it and see how, how close we are. 27 inches look at that man that's right on 27 inches maybe a hair short I don't care about that it's pretty close so I just need to make six more of these I need nine so I'll make six more and then I'll go up and I'll start nailing those into that uh, top plate this is the last piece off of that 2x4 I was just cutting and I've got a problem here at this end, we've got a big knot right there. That log had some pretty good sized knots, so there's some big knots in these. So this is not something you'd want to use in a struct truly structural sense. Just not enough strength through that knot. If you look at the other side, it's got a little bit more beef on it, so it's not quite so bad. The other thing is, is that this is close to the end of the tree where it was cut. And so you see some cracking. So I would just as soon get rid of this. So that would put us at about 27. But then we got another one. We got another knot right there. Let's see, so if I measure from the other end, and that 27 is right there at that knot. I don't really like that. I wouldn't put these in a really highly stressed area, but like at the end up against the the beam where there's really not much weight on it, it's not and it can be nailed into the beam, it can be used for that. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to cut. I'm gonna... Wow, the guy should be in South Dakota. What's he doing here? So I'm going to cut this, uh, this off, take 27 inches, which will put me right about here, short of that. Um, that knot 
and then I'll go 27 inches of that. So this knot will end up being more in the middle rather than in the end. I can cut this at pretty much anywhere. It's not, the measurement isn't all that critical. So just so it's so it takes off that that knot. I'm going to measure 27 inches. The camera is a little bit out of level, I think. Oh boy, right there, 27 inches. Mark it with my pencil. Again, holding this, making sure my fingers aren't close to that blade, lifting up and towards me just slightly so it doesn't bind. There's my 27 inch piece. I compare it with the other ones I got here. It's right on. So now I'm going to. Now, one problem that I've got with this board here, and because of this knot, as I was cutting with the sawmill, as the blade gets, the sawmill blade gets a little bit dull you tend to start getting waves in it. And so, I don't know if you can see see that. There's a little bit of a wave right there. And a little bit of wave right there. I think you can probably see that. And that's because the blade, as the blade's coming along, it hits that knot, which forces it to go up just a little bit. And then it planes back out and gets normal. So, these knots will cause havoc on the saw when you're trying to cut sharper blade would probably have helped alleviate that or we could run it through the planer run this through the planer and, and plane it off so that it became more straight but i like this rough sawn stuff this is nice rough sawn lumber and this doesn't bother me that much so we're not going 27 from that end we're going to go 27 from this end. Okay, so that's five of them. I need four more. Get another two by four up here. <laughs> okay, so this one, we got sort of that same problem. We got a big knot here at the end. When the guy was cutting this, cutting this tree down, he probably cut it just below the knot line. So I'm gonna cut that knot out, do another couple 27s. wonder why don't I measure 27 and another 27 and another 27 and then cut them well because you're never quite sure exactly where your your kerf line is going to be where your cut line is and so if you pre-measure one might be longer one might be a little shorter so I prefer to just measure them one at a time Now you may notice, I don't know if you can see that or not, but when I'm ma making my blade go down that line, I'm staying just a little bit to this side of that line. Because if I cut on that side of the line, or I cut right down the middle of the line, or I cut on that side, it makes a little bit of a difference in how long this thing's going to be. Now since I made it exactly 27 inches long with that line, I want to cut on that side so that my line... My line is still basically there, so it becomes 27 inches. So that's something you got to bear in mind.
Now I hope that 27 inches is the right measurement. Now wouldn't that be great if I cut these all to 27 and they were supposed to be 28? Yeah. Another thing about using, especially with a worm drive saw, any saw I guess, is there's two different axes that you have to be really careful that you maintain. One is this way, because if you get it tilted like this, the blade's going to be cutting at an angle, or like this. And there is an adjustment on here so you can cut at an angle if you want, but typically you want to be doing a 90 degree cut. So the first thing is you want to make sure that your saw is resting on the front there, nice and square. The second is, is that as you, as you cut, you don't want the saw going through like this. You want the, you want this to be, you want the, the plate or the shoe to sit nice and tight on the, on the piece of wood. So that's why I will sometimes, when I'm ready to start, I line up the little V first line up the saw blade and then I play around with it make sure that I'm sitting on there nice and flat the other thing is is as this blade is turning you gotta make sure you hold it out like this. You don't want it to come down like this. Sometimes these will get stuck open. That's dangerous. Go down there and you cut your leg. So you wanna make sure you hold it like that. And also make sure that this doesn't get caught up in there. So those are little things. I mean, I've, I've sawed a cord off before and I've set it down when this thing was stuck open and made a big gouge in the plywood on the floor, so. It's a dangerous tool, you just got to be careful and hold it and respect it. And remember these are not your typical 2x4. This measurement here is a true 4 inches. That's how I've started cutting my lumber is doing a true 4 inches this way and an inch and a half this way. <clears throat> On the sawmill I have to cut it an inch and five eighths to allow for an eighth of an inch for the saw curve. When I set it at one and five eighths it comes out at one and a half. So one and a half this way, four this way. Typical stuff you get at Home Depot is going to be three, three and a half, something like that. So it's a little bit beefier. So this will be my last one, I think. So I'm get it, get it, get it balanced. Make sure it's balanced this way. So there's my nine studs. I'm gonna go up there and start laying them out. We'll see how that goes. There's one that has that knot in it, so I'll use that.
go do the other one. I suppose. I suppose that while I'm here, I can just go ahead and stand this up. I guess I'll wait until tomorrow. No use getting that compressor going just for a couple of meals. There we go. We've got that front wall framed up. That went pretty well. Got a few more nails to put in. Ended up being pretty even there. So we'll add a, a second top plate across here. I don't know. The joy if the Raptors are going to be sitting right on here, only only weak point is that. that little seam down there that'd make it stronger especially if we had the top plate going out past the post there so I guess I'll do that well I think that's the end of uh, this video it took two days to get this done we were interrupted by having to go out and get some more free totes we are at the point where we can start making some roof rafters I think and we'll see how that goes should be tomorrow. It's gonna to be a little cooler tomorrow and make, make working a little bit easier. It's 
little bit after five here and I'd say it's probably about 86 degrees. You know, man, it's not hot for Mississippi or Alabama, I guess. And the humidity is not terrible, so it's not really bad working weather, but for an old guy like me, I get pretty well burned out working out in the heat like this. I guess that's all for today. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified next time we put out a video. So thanks for coming along today. Appreciate it very much, and we'll catch you next time.